Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to assemble this Hershey grandfather clock movement. I'm gonna show you exactly how to put the strike in time, the chime in time, and make sure the hour correction device is working properly. And uh, this was a request made by Angela. So Angela, this video is for you. Here's an overview of what you'll learn in this video. I'm gonna show you how to take this and assemble it fully and put it in time so you have a beautiful end result. I'm gonna show you how to put the strike in time so that it strikes properly with the appropriate run. I'm gonna show you how to put the chime in time so that it chimes properly and in the correct sequence. We will also look at how to adjust the self-correcting hour mechanism so that it lifts properly on the hour if you get out of sync with the time. And finally, when you've done all your work correctly, you can enjoy the final results and the sense of accomplishment when your clock is chiming and striking properly and keeping good time. So let's get started. So here's the Hershey grandfather clock movement, completely disassembled. That's the uh, movement number for you. So I had asked, been asked to do a video similar to my rack and snail video uh, for this one, because it is a little unique in uh, the way that you put it in time. So I'm gonna assemble this clock for you guys. This video is designed for a beginner type level but I am assuming that you have some working knowledge of clock repair basics and have successfully installed and put in time a regular Hermely style rack and snail movement. So if you haven't done that yet, or you wanna learn how to do that, see the link above. So for starters, we have to assemble a few parts on the inside of the front plate. So there's a, a wheel here, it goes on this post here. And I like to put a drop of oil on this post And slip that guy on there and that's secured with an e-clip like so there are two posts that you don't want to forget to put in one here and one here and there is a um, shorter end and a longer end on this piece. And we want the shorter end to be sticking out of the front of the movement. Like so. Just a little snug, not too tight because I like them to move a little bit for when I'm putting the plates together, it makes them a little bit easier to install. This piece here is what uh, stops the warning wheel and controls the drop into the cams on the front works to control the chime and strike. So um, one thing about these guys is you wanna make sure that they're straight because uh, sometimes people will bend these posts so that they drop into the cams. Um, but really, it's a poor way to make an adjustment. So we just want to make sure these are straight. And I also like to put a drop of oil on each of these posts uh, to make them a little bit smoother moving. I'm going to secure this side with an E-clip. Like so. And if you look at it, the two pieces should freely move next to each other and not bind. 
See, there's a little rivet on the back of this guy. You don't want that to catch. And then when you install it, you have to make sure. So it goes, this post here goes in like so. And it drops into these slots. So you need to make sure they're close to the plate, but not rubbing. And you, you can secure the other side with an E-clip. Like so. Because this black piece is very important to the proper functioning of the chime mechanism, I like to install the movement with the warning wheel and check the clearance with those hooks. And as shown here, it's very, very close to that wheel. So I actually need to make an adjustment what I'm going to do is uh, bend those black pieces so they're slightly closer to the plate and further away from the warning wheel and make sure all the pins are still straight coming out of the movement so all the drops into the cams are uh, correct. All right, so I made a little adjustment to that. I'm going to stick my warning wheel in here, show you the clearance that I now have. You can see that... Uh, Got much more clearance. I'm not going to have any problems with that piece uh, contacting that warning wheel as it spins. So now that we got that taken care of, we can progress with assembling the movement. Now you don't want to forget to put this piece in, which I've been guilty of. It goes right up here. One, one of these tabs goes into this hole. This, this tab here goes into this hole and the other tab sits on top. Like so. All right. Now the chime train is the one that's um, unique on this clock. So you have this wheel here, which has this groove in it, which is for this post to drop into here. So this controls the hour strike correction. So you want this post to drop into this slot when it's at three quarter hour all right now one of the things that i like to do is verify in case i need to make an adjustment that this wheel spins on the shaft and you see that it does and that's in case you need to adjust that um, after you assemble the clock. Because we know this moves, we can actually adjust the position of that after the clock is assembled if need be. So I'm gonna put in this wheel first, which goes here, like so. I'm gonna position it so this post here is dropped into that slot. Like so. Now I'm going to put in the rest of the wheels.
And then the warning wheel, shown here, I want to make sure that warning pin is at top dead center. Like so. And then we'll put the fly in. And now we've got all the wheels in place. And we're ready to put the back plate on. So I'm not going to do that on the camera because it's a little bit uh, tricky to uh, make sure I can show you on the camera what I'm doing. If you're not sure how to put a movement together, I did record a video on how I do that. Just be aware there are different techniques that people employ. But if you'd like to know how I do it, click the link above. All right, so I got my movement together. <clears throat> and I'm just going to tighten down the, these nuts. And now I gotta oil the movement. Now my uh, clock repairman is out doing a service call. Didn't leave me any oilers. So I made myself a little oiler here, this needle, and put some oil on this plastic cup. And I got myself a little oiler. So I'll just go ahead and Oil the pivots really quick, and then we'll go ahead with the front works and back works. Okay, so I got the movement nice and oiled. Sounds pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna show you. So this piece, that black piece, goes up and down like so, all right? And if you remember, there's a post here. This post, and there's a slot on this right here, that slot. And that post drops into that slot you want to lock the warning wheel on the teeth of this black piece here okay so I'm gonna go around other way all the way around see it's gonna lock every time I drop that black piece on the warning pin so I'm gonna hold it up and go around Comes a slot coming up. I'm going to drop this before. See, it stopped. So I'm going to lift it back up. Let it go around again. I'm going to keep doing that until. dropped in that slot and is locked on the warning pin. Now, I really should have let the warning wheel go around one more time so that that post was deeper into the slot. And you'll see why later I have to make an adjustment on that rotating disc on the wheel. But had I let that go around again, I wouldn't have had to do that. So that's the position I want to set the chime up with the cams so that it's at three quarter hour. And then it'll only strike on the hour. The star wheel here on the front. See the star wheel here? It's got four stars that go around. 
and one of them is taller than the other three. This one here. That one's taller. So when that one lifts, it's going to lift it out of that groove and strike the hour. So I'm going to show you how to set all that up. So the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is put on the locking levers. This one goes through the plate, through the front of the movement, like so. It goes into that uh, square, like so. See? Came through here. On the other side. It's held in place by an E-clip right here. Clip that into place like so. I also like to put a drop of oil on that guy on the front and back where it interfaces with the movement. This guy is going to sit on that piece that we just put here. But I'm going to put a drop of oil on that post. So. This guy sits right here. And is also held in place with an e-clip. All right. And as this goes around, it's going to lift it one, two, three, and then this one's a bit higher. And that's for the release it for the three quarter chime going into the hour. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make sure that we're in our locking position. We are. Our post is in our groove. See that? Right here, our post is in our groove, and our warning wheel, our warning pin is locked on these black hooks here, shown down there. All right, now what I want to do is lock down my fly in that position with the clothes hanger so it doesn't move on me, like so. All right, so this cam. got two cams built in, one on the rear, one on the front. So you've got, it's installed on this post here. So it goes on this post, and this little pin here will go into this back cam. It'll drop into these slots on the back cam as it goes through the four quarter hours. Then the front slots will be dropped into by the pin on this piece. I'll show you how that works. So this piece is actually going to go like so. It goes like so. And then when you install this, this guy over here, when you install this guy over here, you've got this pin over here that drops into the back cam. Then you've got this pin up here, which drops into the front large cam. And then this pin here will drop into the other cam, which has one drop it drops into every quarter hour which you actually have to install first because it goes underneath this one put this on gently I'm gonna lift this guy up a hair just gently put that in there so that that pin It's 
about the center of that drop. And we're just going to put it on there snug. So we want to make sure that this is working properly before we do our, before we put it on hard, because it's difficult to take it off. Also, same goes with this one. When I put it on, finally, it goes on there pretty tight. And I don't want to take it off if I can avoid it. There is a screw that it tightens to the shaft. Um, but this one is just press fit on there. So I'm going to put um, a little bit of oil on these guys. And then secure them in place. Drop oil there. Drop oil there. Okay, it goes like so. This guy goes like so. So now I'm going to put on the um, post here that holds these guys into position. And there's a washer that goes on this side. And then it's tightened down with two, two nuts. Tighten those guys up. I'm gonna put a drop of oil in each of those pivots. One. Two. Now let's see how this action works. So as I go around with my center wheel, see how that lifts this guy over here. And that's for the hour. So that's the quarter hour. Half hour, three quarter hour, and then this releases for the hour. So it'll play the hour chime. See how it goes higher? That allows this pin here and the post to travel out of the slot during warning. And then when it fully drops, the clock will go. With my fly locked, it's in the three quarter hour position. So one, two, three. So it's gonna be right here when um, I want this guy. And if I look from the side, okay, this pin, going to go into one of these slots here. And this pin is going to go to the slot on the front. And as you can see, this pin looks bent up. So oftentimes you'll see uh, repairmen, instead of properly putting this into adjustment, will bend these so that it stops correctly. But that should be straight, so I'm going to straighten that really quick. All right, now I want to show you how this works from this view. So here you can see the post. It's dropped into the slot of this disc on this wheel. And you can see that this cam, there's a pin here that's dropped into this slot on the cam. And at the same time, the warning pin is locked. The warning pin is locked on that black piece there. So that's the lock position. And <clears throat> what I want to do is show you, I'm going to apply power to the train, my finger here, I'm pushing this up, which is going to cause this wheel to go down. And when I advance the hour or the, um, the center shaft here, the hook, for the quarter hour, it's going to lift 
this pin, this mechanism here is going to lift this mechanism, which lifts this mechanism. So they're all going to lift out of their drops as it rises. You can see them rising. You can see the post coming out of the slot in the back. And then when it, when this star fully clears, drops, the movement will go. With that drop, the train should have advanced, but it didn't because it's slightly out of adjustment. That post needs to be a little bit deeper into the groove on the disc that's on the wheel. So I'm gonna make this adjustment after I put the other cam on. As I mentioned earlier, I should have let the warning wheel advance one more turn. So now <clears throat> when I install this larger cam onto this post, this pin will be in the back part of the cam. It'll be in a back slot. This pin will be on the front slot. And we'll put it in position it so it's in the three-quarter slot, which is here. And while this post is in its slot. So I'm going to go around until I get back to my slot. So it's locked. I'm going to hold the train while I put a clothespin on the fly. All right, so now that it's in that locked position, I'm going to install my other cam. And I want this post here to be in this slot. All right, so when you're putting this <clears throat> back on, there's usually a divot, as you can see here, from where it was screwed onto the post before. And it can be pretty hard to get back on. Oftentimes, I will smooth that divot a hair so that it's not too tight, but you don't want to um, you don't want it to be too loose. So it will take some force to get that on, which is why another reason why you want to make sure you got it adjusted correctly when you put it on. So that's basically the position we're going to put it on. So that post is going to go into this slot here, and this back post here is going to go into this slot. And then we'll tighten down this screw. And you want to be careful if you push this in too hard or if you tap it too hard, you could push out your bushing on your back plate by pushing this wheel too hard. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. All right, so before I put this into position fully, <clears throat> if you remember, this cam, I only put on just snugly. So I'm going to uh, tap that down just a hair so it's on there a bit harder. And one of the tricks that I use to uh, ensure the bushing doesn't pop out of the plate is I'll take a uh, piece of wood and I'll lay that pivot this one here so that when I tap that down that block is going to support the uh, bushing and the pivot prevent it from popping out it's also not going to damage the plate so I'm just going to give that a light tap so it's on there uh, a little bit better. This pin is extending more into the slot. 
okay? Okay, so now it's time to put on <clears throat> the other cam. And <clears throat> similar to the other cam, you want to be careful when you push this on because it's kind of difficult um, that you don't push out the back bushing if you bushed it. So I'm just going to put this on snug by hand, roughly in the position I want it, which is three-quarter hour position here. All right. And then <clears throat> I'm actually going to use a little trick to push it on using my drill press. So let me show you that. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do is when, I'm gonna, when I press on this cam, I wanna make sure that bushing doesn't pop out. So what I'm gonna do is slide a larger bushing over this shaft so that it's tight against that bushing on the plate. And then, essentially, this is gonna sit over hit this, and I'm gonna press through the on the other side with my drill press. So I'm gonna set that over here under my drill press and show you how I do that. And voila, you see the pin is now in the slot and, but you see that the uh, back hip pin here is not in the slot. We have a little bit more to go yet. So I'm gonna put it back on the press and push it down some more. Okay, now I got this cam in position See the pin here in the back, in the rear cam slot, and I've got the pin here on the top in the three quarter hour slot. So now I can tighten that guy down. And I'm not gonna tighten it too tight, just snug because I wanna test it, make sure it's working properly. So I'm gonna take my clothing pin off here. Now, when I turn the center shaft here, it should not go until the largest spoke on this star wheel lifts. So this is a shorter lift, doesn't warn, good. This is a shorter lift, doesn't warn. Now this next one is for the hour. So if I did everything correctly, this is gonna lift it high enough to come out of that slot. Yeah, you see it coming out, it warned. And, oh, we had a false start. So what that means is, this wheel here needs to be adjusted slightly because it's not far enough into the slot. See it drop down back into the slot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rotate this disc a hair down so that that doesn't occur. Okay, so I made a minor adjustment where I moved this disc, I rotated it slightly down. And as you can see, the post is dropped into the slot Post is a little bit further advanced in the slot. There's a little bit of a gap there. So now I already tested this, but I'm gonna show you the um, how it works for self-correcting the hour. So this is gonna be a ha shorter lift, doesn't go. Shorter lift, doesn't go. All right. Short, no, that was a shorter lift. So this is now for the hour. 
So it should go. Born, drop, and there it goes. So now I've got everything in the correct position. So I'm going to tighten down this cam with a screwdriver a little bit more. And I'm going to push this guy in a little bit so it's a little bit tighter. But this chime is now in sequence. And I need to install the strike and then put on the hammers. And then put her on the rack and test her out. And that should be that. I hope the explanation of how to install this chiming sequence was adequate. If you do have any questions or want clarifications, just send me a comment. Now, the best technique for adjusting this disc uh, is debatable. If you got a good one, I'd be open to hearing it. But um, one technique that was suggested to me was using a pair of pliers and grabbing it and rotating it while locking the wheel in place. Um, and I've also used uh, like this, uh, this is actually a dental tool where I reach in and grab this, one of these holes and give it a counter torque while I hold the wheel in place so that I'm not bending anything because it's just a very small adjustment. It doesn't need to move very much as long as you start it out in the correct, in the position that we did in the beginning. Um, it should just be like a hair adjustment. All right. So now I'm going to tighten down this guy, the smaller cam in the back, and I position this cam so that I can access the center. I'm going to do the same thing I did before by resting the back of the movement onto a wood block and just giving it a tap with a hammer. So I'll demonstrate that. It's much easier when you have a, an assistant. All right, that should do the trick. All right, so now we're going to install the strike side. And the first thing I want to do is I want to put the nuts on the back of these guys, tighten these down, because when I put the rack on, getting access to this nut becomes difficult. So I'm going to do that really quick. And um, the way we want to position this is with the warning wheel locked on this guy. So as I advance the train, you see that the warning wheel locked on this black arm here. Right here. So when it's locked in that position, we want to lock our fly with a clothing pin. And now it's not going to move. All right. So we got our train locked in position. All right. Now that I got those nuts tightened down, I'm going to put the strike hammers on because I'm going to want to um, have those in place so that I ensure I have enough run with my star wheel before I install the front works going to make it a lot easier so that I don't have to make any adjustments after I've set the front works. So I'm going to install this guy. But first, I'm going to install spring here, which oftentimes I don't normally take out of the movement. It goes like so. All right. And 
this guy is going to rest right in here. And you can see in that position, this pin here is resting on this star wheel point and there's not enough run there. So that's why we want to put this in first so that we can make sure that's positioned properly before we install the front works. All right, now we're gonna install the spring and plate, hold it in place. We got nice spring action. And we'll tighten down these nuts. And we'll add a drop of oil to the other side of the pivot. And now we're going to position the run. So as I advance my train, I'm going to release the warning wheel. And we're going to lift. And drop. And then right there, we're going to let the warning wheel continue and stop. And that's the run that we want for our train. So that when the clock finishes striking, it stops there, as opposed to somewhere lower, closer to the point on the star, it's going to have difficulty lifting. So that's why we do that. Then we're going to lock down our fly, our closing pin. So now we're looking at the front of the movement here. And the first thing I'm going to do is put on the gathering pallet. And I'm just going to put it on loosely by hand in case I need to make any slight adjustments. So that's just barely on there, and that's to uh, make sure it's properly positioned. Want it just like that, about 90 degrees with the horizontal. And I'm going to give it a little tap uh, to put it down a little bit tighter. And I usually just use a bench key to fit over the pin and the arbor, or I'm sorry, the pin and the pivot, and give it a a little whack with my hammer. There. Now that's not going to move on me when I'm uh, making my adjustments, but it's also loose enough to where if I need to fine tune the position of the gathering pallet, I can. So next thing I'm going to do is put on the minute wheel. And now I want to make sure that my center shaft has just completed lifting the hour, which is right there. So this is a lower lift, quarter hour, lower lift, half hour, lower lift, three quarter hour, and then here 
is the hour it lifts higher. And when it just finishes its drop, that's where I want to install my rack and snail. So I'm gonna put on my rack first because it actually rides below the snail. And there's a spring here that causes the rack to drop. And if you need uh, to tighten the spring, you can bend it slightly so it's going this way. So here if I drop the rack, spring causes it to drop. Like so. Now here I'm going to position my snail on my center shaft so that the rack drops at the 12 o'clock slot. So if you look at the snail, there's a um, ridge here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It goes all the way around. Each one of those is a different drop length so that when the rack drops, so I'm going to lift this, the rack will drop, and you'll see down here, this will interface with the snail at a particular point. So we want that point to be at the 12 o'clock point. And it looks to be not quite there. So we're gonna hold this wheel down here so we don't lift it out. We're gonna rotate one wheel. And then we're gonna drop our rack. See where it falls. And it still looks like it's falling on the 11 o'clock. So I'm gonna move it one more tooth. And then uh, drop my rack again. And it looks like it's on the 12 o'clock there. And you can also see The hook should drop in the middle of the tooth at the 12, so let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it looks like we're in the right spot. And the way that I do the final test is is advance the train to the quarter hour, half hour, three quarter hour, and then the hour. And if I adjusted it properly, the rack should now drop into the first slot and on the first ridge of the snail. <clears throat> All right. We can reposition the rack and we can do it again if we like. One, two, three quarter, and then the hour. And now I should drop into the second slot and onto the second ridge and so on and so forth through each hour. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So I'm going to put my washer on here. And my E-clip. Like so. And then if I pull on my nail it's not going to come out of there and I always like to test that to make sure if I pull up and twist it's not going to come out of the 
uh, gearing. All right, so now I've got that in position. All right, so now we're gonna try this out and make sure everything works together. So the um, cam here, when it lifts this pin, as this pin goes around the cam, the cam causes this lever mechanism to go up really high. And when it does that, it lifts this lever, the rack hook, high enough so the rack will drop and that's when it will warn. So I have to apply power to the chime side while applying power to the strike side to check the strike to make sure it's working properly. So I'm just gonna apply power to this side. Get it going. And then I'm gonna apply power to both sides so that when it, you're gonna see this beginning to lift, it's lifting here where my thumb is at. It's lifting high, high, high. And you'll see now the rack hook is beginning to lift. The rack drops. And now you see the hammer is striking in the background while I'm applying power with my hand. and then it locks. So now I want to check the position of the star wheel and make sure that uh, I've got enough run. If I look in there, I do. So you see this pin here has plenty of room to travel before it engages this point of the star. And I'll just show you that. From this angle. So you can see it. Like so. And there we go. Now I'm gonna put the um, chime hammers on and I'll show you how I put the chime in proper sequence. And we'll put it in the rack with the weights on and then I can show you both the front works working properly and the back works. So it's a little bit easier to see because it's hard to apply power to both trains manually and show you what's going on. So we'll take another look at that when it's in the rack. I've got the back of the movement here. We're gonna install the chime hammers. Now, uh, some repairmen will put the chime hammers on uh, before they put the front works for the chime on, but I tend to do it last because you can adjust the position of the chime sequence really easily um, after the clock is in the rack. Put a drop of oil in the music roll. Tighten those guys down. Put a spot of oil on the other side of the music roll. Forget what this wheel is called, but it's going to go on this shaft here and engage with the music roll here and it's got a screw on it and this is what we'll use to uh, adjust the sequence there we go okay so now I'm just gonna lightly tighten this screw so it's snug
There we go. And now we're in business. We can put the chains on, we can put it in the rack, and then I can adjust the music roll last with the power on. All right, so let's do that. But first, I have to put the verge and the crutch in. Now in this particular movement, you have to put the um, leader into the crutch before you install the verge because you're not going to be able to get that in there otherwise like so then we'll put the bridge on All right, so I'll put <clears throat> install the bridge in position, put the suspension spring on it, and then uh, put her in the rack. We'll, and then I'll show you the rack and snail and the final adjustment on the um, chime side. So I've got the movement in the rack here, and as you can see, it's almost gonna strike a quarter hour. And you can see that the chime hammers are definitely raised, so they're in the wrong position, which I already knew before I put it in the rack. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a quarter hour, half hour, and then get to the three quarter hour, and then I'm going to make my adjustment on the back of the clock for the chime hammers. So if I go to the quarter hour, it's going to strike incorrectly. See the hammer is raised, that's incorrect. I'm going to go to the half hour. That's incorrect. Then I'm going to go to the three quarter hour. And again, you'll see that it's incorrect. But right here, now this is where I want to make my adjustment. So I'm going to lock the train by putting a closed pin on the fly. I'm going to stop the pendulum so it stops running. So we don't need that to run for this adjustment. Now I'm going to move the camera angle so you can see how I adjust the clock or the chimes. For a Westminster chime, the last four notes of the three quarter hour chime sequence are the same four notes of the quarter hour sequence, which is four hammers striking consecutively, one, two, three, four. And that's why I make this adjustment at that position, because if those last four notes are the same as the four notes on the quarter hour, I know I've got the right sequence for the Westminster chime. So this wheel here is what I'm going to be adjusting, that position. As I move that position, you see the hammers are going to go through their sequence. And what I want to do is find the one, two, because remember this wheel is, is loose, it's not, it's just snug, so it's going to move. And I want to move through until one, two, three, four, right there. So now I want to go through my chime sequence again and see if I need to make any more minor adjustments or not. And then we'll tighten down that screw. So here we are again at the, at the front view. I took my clothespin off the fly and we're going to go to the hour.
and none of the hammers were left remaining in the air which is a good sign my strike is going another good sign now we're going to go through the quarter hour make sure it's playing the right sequence should play the same sequence that it did for the three quarter one two three four very good then eight notes here good and then here three quarter And the final four notes should be the same as the quarter hour. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And we'll go to the hour for good measure. And as long as it plays all 16 notes, we're going to tighten down that screw in the back wheel. And our chime sequence is correct and adjusted. I like to test it again after I tighten the screw, just in case it makes a minor move on the shaft. But other than that, we should be good. All right, I'm gonna tighten down the screw. Hammer did move a bit when I tightened it down. So I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit. Moving it forward. Music roll forward a bit. And we're going to run through again, make sure we're all good. So here's a quarter hour. One, two, three, four. Didn't go. So a little more music roll. Go to the half hour. What I'm doing is moving the music roll manually by hand, which repositions the music roll. Because I already tightened that screw. It's kind of hard on the fingers, but. That's the three quarter hour. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And then test the hour. Also keep in mind when it warns, none of the hammers should lift. You don't want to see any pre-lifting. Otherwise you'd, the music rolls move too far forward in the sequence. You gotta have run, run on that chime roll as well. And there we go. We're in sequence. I'm going to do my best to show you this. It's kind of an odd angle for me uh, to fit back here. But I'm going to advance the um, warning to the hour. You can see the uh, position of the pin as it relates to the star wheel. So when you'll see the pin, the star wheel advance toward the pin during warning. Here we go. That was warning. It barely moved at all. There's plenty of space for it to go. So here's on the hour. It's gonna go through the chime sequence. And then you'll see how much motion we got leading up to the pin. And where it stops. So it's got plenty of run. And that's how you want it to be to uh, ensure that your strike doesn't stop on you. And then uh, I'll add a little bit of grease on each of the teeth of the star wheel to add some lubrication. Now I'm gonna show you the hour correction mechanism working. So if you remember, we um, position this post so it sits in the groove on that disc. And the reason that it's there and the cam behind the large cam is so that if it needs to self-correct for the hour, it won't lift high enough out of that cam unless you get to the higher hour lobe on the star wheel. So 
I'm going to show you that. So right now, I'm striking the third quarter hour. And if I go to the hour, it'll strike like normal. But I should be able to go backwards. Say I go backwards, one, two. So now when I go forward, it should not lift high enough to chime until it gets the hour. And you see that it doesn't. Here's a three quarter hour. And you see that it doesn't. Now when I do the hour, it will lift high enough. See it coming out of that disc on the wheel here during the morning? And then boom, it advanced just enough to get out of that groove and allows the clock to go. And that's how the clock adjusts for the hour. Hey, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I do read all your comments and I do my best to answer them as I can. And uh, if you have any recommendations for future videos, feel free to leave those as well. Thank you, Angela, for this suggestion. And I hope it does answer your question and resolve your problem. I like when the internet yells at me. What do you call this movement anyway? All right. And this... <laughs> Hold on a second. Was there a lady's name who wanted this video, Angela? Hi. I was waiting for my daughter to step up. Yeah. Yeah, you think.